I'm here in Medjugorje and I'm with, what's your name? Catherine. Catherine, where are you from? Townside yeah. with the Newcastle mm -hmm. and Hexham mm -hmm. diocese. Mm -hmm. In our diocese we have a group called Medjugorje Northeast mm -hmm. and every year they bring pilgrims to Medjugorje. Mm -hmm. Wow. And how often have you come to Medjugorje? I was coming um, from 1997 mm -hmm. until the year before my husband died mm -hmm. and I have I came back uh, last year for the first time since he died mm -hmm. and that was painful yeah. in some ways because I was looking for him I felt I w had left him somewhere and I couldn't find him so at times I got upset that I couldn't find my disabled husband and I wasn't looking after him properly. And then Our Lady gave me the cuddle to mm -hmm. tell me it's all right, he's with her now. Mm -hmm. So he can give her, him any cuddles that he needs. And he's not in pain, he's not in a wheelchair, he doesn't need those now because Christ healed him totally and he's living a happier life. And he's watching over me and his little boy. Goosebumps all over, Catherine. This is, I mean, it's hard for us, no, the ones to stay back. It's, you know, but we have the assurance we will see them again, you know. I mean, they're exactly the couples. You know. The most important thing is the first visit with, of the visionaries with mm -hmm. Father Slavko yeah. to England to the youth camp. Mm -hmm. I took a trip bus of children from my deanery down to camp in the Abbey grounds and for a week mm -hmm. we shared mm -hmm. time with the visionaries. The adults, the youth leaders had to do all the cooking and the cleaning and looking after the camp mm -hmm. so the children had time during the day with the visionaries mm -hmm. and Father Slavko mm -hmm. but before we started the day and at the end of the day we all prayed together and that was wonderful and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come to Medjugorje mm -hmm. to be able to pray so beautifully with them yeah. and the first time I came with mm -hmm. my little boy mm -hmm. when he was only four mm -hmm. we were outside of Vishka's house and the little one was at the bottom of the fence mm -hmm. and Vishka came down the stairs the adults around him pushed him out of the way because they wanted to get near a Vishka and a Franciscan monk pushed through the crowd to pick the bit little one up off the ground mm -hmm. put him up on his shoulders mm -hmm. and the gate was opened and they went up onto the veranda mm -hmm. and Vishka through the translator said after giving my little boy a real cuddle she said it was a cuddle from Our Lady who loved this little boy mm. and it made my heart so joyful that Our Lady was actually watching over him mm -hmm. because on his first birthday mm -hmm. when the doctors wanted to put off all the um, machines when his daddy was in a coma mm -hmm. he was the one that woke daddy up and brought him back Tender through story. prayers. Tender story, it's a beautiful story. On, my, on my little boy's when my little boy was born, mm -hmm. we had to go to see the um, cardiologist and the chief consultant was down talking to us and he said that my husband needed a quadruple bypass mm -hmm. because he'd had um, rubella when he was little and two of the valves had never grown and the other ones were very thin. So he only had two valves working in his heart mm -hmm. and they weren't were closing. So they said they needed a bypass as soon as possible. And four times he went to go to hospital for the bypass mm -hmm. and he was sent home. The fifth time he went into the hospital, had the bypass. The, he, we were told the operation had gone really well, but he didn't come out of the anaesthetic and he went into a deep coma. And the doctor said, the, on the little one's first birthday after daddy had been in a coma for five months mm -hmm. that they wanted to sh shut off all the machines 
and my priest father Tom knew the head consultant mm -hmm. took me back and said to the consultant although you see you've tried everything you haven't there's something that man's wanting and it's his little boy to say hello he needs them mm -hmm. On the baby's first birthday, we took the little one into the hospital and before he even got near daddy, he was shouting for dada. Mm -hmm. And my husband's eyes started to move and his fingers moved. So we got the consultant and three hours later, we were allowed to see him with all the machines off and the little one to get cuddles on his birthday off his daddy. Mm -hmm. And two weeks later, we got him home. And we had him for 18 years that f the little one wouldn't have had a daddy. Yeah. So Our Lady mm -hmm. gave us the grace through prayer to have, our, f have my other half, my husband, back with us. So, wow. <clears throat> and, and what would you tell people like who've gone through things like this in their life? What would you tell them as an advice or your experience after looking back now and coming here and you know, first time? If you trust Our Lady, mm -hmm. she will help you through whatever problem you have. But we can't give her a time limit. We have to put it in her hands mm -hmm. and pray to her for what we need. And if it's God's holy will, we will get. But it's Our Lady is the best intercessor for us. And the visionaries, when they pray with you, mm -hmm. is completely different. Having Vishka actually sit in a room with us, mm -hmm. praying. Mm -hmm. Her in Croatian and the group of us in English, mm -hmm. it transforms the prayers. There's nothing like having prayers with the presence of Our Lady and the feeling that Our Lady is there with us. Mm. Okay, I, that's exactly how you say. You have to experience it yourself. No, you can't. You can't describe it. People have to come to magic and experience it. And what is for you the beauty of this place of Medjugorje here, being here? You came, six, how many times you came? In total, six times, you said something like that? Um, we came in 98, mm -hmm. and then every other year until 2014. My husband died in 2015, and I didn't come back until last year. And I found it really difficult because the last time I was here, the time before that I was here, mm -hmm. I'd been pushing him around in a wheelchair and I kept thinking I'd lost him mm -hmm. and getting into my head that he was actually with Our Lady and Christ mm -hmm. was hard. Yes, to let go now. It's mm -hmm. hard to let go of someone you love, but... I can trust that he's there now because last year when I was here, mm -hmm. I got the healing I needed. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Can you describe that healing a little bit? It makes me more at peace. Mm -hmm. And at times I have got, I get flashbacks to, because I've got post-traumatic stress disorder and I can have flashbacks to things that were horrendous in my life mm -hmm. and it's only when I turn and say to Our Lady help me now that I feel her presence and her calming me. I think it's for people, somebody watching now that video who needs to listen to this, you know, Our Lady is the help, she's the help, no? She's the, the mother, it's another help than the Father, God the Father or Jesus. It's also for our Protestant friends, you have different ways, ways to approach Jesus, God the Father. And you can go through Jesus, you can go through Our Lady, it's the feminine way. It's just a different way to Rome, we say. Our, a lot of ways, our all roads lead to Rome, we say, no? And this is another way to Rome, isn't it's it, Our Lady? Oh, yeah? when Christ gives us his mother as our mother, we have to hold on to that. The other Christian churches don't agree mm -hmm. that we can pray to Our Lady to intercede with the, her little boy. Mm -hmm. She did that first at Canaan. Yeah. She did it for people. She asked for help from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And she can 
ask in ways we can't because it's her little boy that she's asking and a mother asking something of their child is more likely to get it than a stranger. And it's a Jewish woman. I have been living in Israel and I started with a Jewish rabbi. A Jewish boy li listens to the mother. It's, it's, a, it's a cultural thing. Yeah? And um, you know, you're from England, you're Catholic. We talked about it. I think it's a beautiful thing what this Catholic chancellor did. That's why you are Catholic now in England. Now, what's his name again? It's Thomas Martin and. Pardon? Who was the chancellor at the time? It's the king who wanted to remarry. Was, Henry. Yeah, but who was the Chancellor? It's not Thomas Merton, it's another one. Um, uh, what's his name again? I don't... So beautiful, a lot of... Thomas More. Tom Thomas More, no? Yeah. And like my spiritual guide, she said, like, check out the humor of Thomas More. That's Catholic fine humor with a wicked sense of... of and soulful, no? And um, here you have an example. If some, somebody does something heroic, down the line, there are people in, uh, in England now who are Catholics, still Catholics, no? How many are there Catholics in England? Are there lots of Catholics? Because it's the Church of England, no? There's lots of other Christian denominations. Mm -hmm. And although my priest doesn't approve, I like to go to ecumenical prayer times with them mm -hmm. because um, they pray in the other churches with more joy and vigor than we seem to do in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. That's what Our Lady they wants to teach here, no? to um, pray from the heart. So they, they, they pray like that and mm -hmm. I will pray with them. But when I'm praying with them, I also pray for them that they find their way to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that because they're not actually Roman Catholics, that the Lord will not hold that against them because they love him in their own ways. Right. That's what Jesus said to disciples when they came. He said, look, Jesus, there are other disciples. They do things in your name. And he said, who is doing things in my name is not against me. How it, you know, there's the Bible verse about it. But I think they miss something, Our Lady. You know? They miss something. They, 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 don't, miss something. they don't have the mother yeah. in their, they in their the life. Yes. They say that if they need to pray, they pray to the Holy Trinity, either as a whole or as individual. That's okay, but it's a different way as we explain, you know. And what is your favorite place here in Medjugorje? The top of Cross Hill. Cross Mountain, all the way up. Whoa, yeah. you're, you're a tough woman. Uh -huh. I promised um, my friends, mm -hmm. um, because we've been praying together for a little girl back in Inverness, mm -hmm. um, she's been trying for years to have a baby and every time she's been pregnant she's lost it mm -hmm. um last year she had a pregnancy and she got to 23 weeks and the doctor said if she got to 24 they would take her into the hospice mm -hmm. look after her and then if anything happened they could bring the baby early so he was there she she lost it two days before going to the hospital right. she um, just before Christmas she got pregnant again and this little one is bigger and stronger than what she should, should be mm -hmm. and they've named it Abby. The little girl is at, going to be Abby mm -hmm. and although she's, she's just turned 30 weeks now, mm -hmm. her measurements are of a baby 34 to 35 weeks. Mm -hmm. So I've had friends, not just Catholic friends, but friends from all the churches and all the, all the groups that I belong to praying for her. Mm -hmm. And this time we are beseeching Our Lady to be a mother to this young girl that wants to be a mum mm -hmm. like her. So we are praying that this one is a successful. Mm -hmm. But if anything happens in, before the 40 weeks, the doctors think they can save the baby and she will have that baby wow so beautiful. so so we we pray and when i ask people to make a prayer chain for something like that they all say they are praying and most of them are praying directly to christ mm -hmm. um the catholic ones i say 
pray also to our mom yeah, that she can be a mom. Yes, and help her through, you know, she's a mother. It's a different way. You know, we man can't experience having a baby. And our lady made the experience. She can help in another way, you know. And um, you pray the rosary? Every day. Why? Why you pray the rosary? I try to, I, I can, mm. I try to do all 20 decades. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's recounting our Lord's life, mm -hmm. death, his resurrection, and the things he did when he was here. Mm -hmm. I so love the Illuminous Mysteries because, too, because, because yeah. it teaches us about Christ being an adult in his ministry. Mm -hmm. And it's only five little glimpses. Mm -hmm. But if you read round those five little stories, there's so much more in them. And meditating on that helps me understand Christ's life. Mm -hmm. He had he had a life on earth. Mm -hmm. He did things like we do. He went to parties. He went to get baptized. He shared meals with he, his friends. And the five luminous ones mm -hmm. tell you that part of Christ's life. Yeah, and that is why I find those the most beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, you see, confession is very central here in Medjugorje. What would you tell, what is the beauty of the, the sacrament of confession? And what would you tell people who are like scared of going to confession? The thing is, we all need to say sorry, even if it's only in deep in our hearts. But if we can go and say it out loud, it lifts the burden off us and through, from us. Um, when we went to Fatima, we got taught the Rosary of repar Reparation and Adoration, which is saying, using the Rosary beads, but saying slightly different prayers. Mm -hmm. And my favourite prayers for that are the fourth and fifth, fourth and fifth decades. The fourth one we pray totally for the families and the fifth one we pray for sins against life. <laughs> In this world we need more prayers for life yes. because euthanasia and abortions are thriving and we need to pray against them. And recently in England they have put um, a bylaw in that you can't go and pray outside an abortion clinic mm -hmm. and a lady who'd been doing that for years went and prayed and stood outside a church away from the um, clinic mm -hmm. but she could still see it and her and a friend stood in outside the church door and prayed for those going in and out mm -hmm. the police the police arrested her and put her in prison because she was praying for life. For life. And we all, the ones who are listening now, we all have to ask ourselves, are we out of our minds? What are we doing there? You know, I'm from Germany. What happened in Germany? The Na what did the Nazis do? They do, did euthanasia. What are we doing? We, are, we have to really think, what are we doing? We are losing our mind. And the priest here said, the world without God looks like what we are seeing in front of our eyes. Because we are destroying ourselves, you know? But Our Lady is the patron of Spook with the Society of Prevention yeah. Against at Life. Mm -hmm. um, and the pro-life group, a mm -hmm. different one, which battles for euthanasia mm -hmm. and abortions. Yeah. Those groups are saying, why won't our cardinals and our bishops speak out mm -hmm. that this is wrong but i think what we all have to do we have to pray for our priests for our bishops our cardinals to be under that pressure under the media pressure they are under the pressure they are taking we all have to pray and we all like cardinal fulton sheen uh, of irish descent and said it's the time of the lay people to stand up and that's what what you are doing right now with this interview what i try to do with the channel like my brother said this morning, the silent ones, the ones who are guided by love, 
they should lead the society, not the loud ones who are angry, who are leading at the moment, who are angry. At the end, they are angry. And with anger, you can't lead, you can't find happiness. That's what we are taught in the Catholic Church now. What Our Lady always wants, be in peace, don't be angry, be joyful. And we have the five stones, we can go through it. It's the, the fasting, we have the scriptures, we have the daily mass, we have the confession, and what is the, 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 the prayer from the heart, no? The rosary. Yeah. So the simple things where you, somebody's listening maybe now who's a bit angry, through these stones you can come back into joy. We all look for joy and peace in our hearts. And I made a, made a lot of interviews with yesterday with a man, Liam from Ireland, he, he sex, women, alcohol. I had the same thing in, in other ways. And it does not give peace. It does not bring the peace. Our Lady brings the peace. Come to Medjugorje, try it out for yourself. No? What would we, what we say, you know, Catherine? We need Our Lady in our lives because we need a mom. Yes. We all need, I see my mother died, we, we, we want to be beyond for our mother, you know, it's, I would like to say, it's absolutely true. And um, at the end, you know, you were married, but you know, a lot of people here in Medjugorje, they look for a vocation. How, how is it good to, to choose a partner and to have a, a, a happy marriage? What would you tell people? Our Lady asked me to look after someone who needed me mm -hmm. and I had a wonderful priest in Father Tom Cass mm -hmm. and he helped us through in more ways than one and he was always there mm -hmm. to pray with us and he had most nights different things that we could go to and pray with mm -hmm. and Father Tom was so charisma, had such charisma that he did lift things up and he p got people involved and he always said we have to address our prayers to Our Lady first. She will take them to Christ. Makes them beautiful now, the prayers beautiful more. No? Beautiful and I think that's also what you said, we have to pray for our priests. Again, we have to pray, they are the gateway to heaven. They are in the front line of the fight. And they give up their lives. We all judge them so harshly, so hard, but they gave up a lot to follow Christ, no? And we are judging them so hard. We should pray for them. Like my, my aunt said, like, did we pray in the 70s last time? We all prayed in the church for the priests. We all lost it. And look what happened to the priests. They are in, in the world as well, in this, in this crazy world. And they need to be covered by, by prayers, no? And at the end, what would you tell people? Why should they come to Medjugorje one time? What would you tell them? To find the true peace and meaning of what Christ gave to us. Mm -hmm. Oh, so beautiful. And you have a favorite saint, if I may ask? John Paul. John Paul, oh, I love him as well. John Paul the second, Pope, John Paul yeah. the second. We, we went when he died on pilgrimage in the footsteps of John Paul. Mm -hmm. And we were introduced to Sister Faustina and the Divine Mercy and since then not only do I do my rosary I try to find times during the day to do the three chaplets mm -hmm. the chaplet of Divine Mercy the chaplet of um, reparation and the chaplet to St Michael wow, beautiful. because I need yeah. need St Michael to defend me when I get angry with things He's there to calm me, but our lady's always in the background. Yeah, beautiful. And you know, what I learned here, just popped up like this, what I learned here as well, our lady want, wants us to learn to surrender, to live in the divine will. Did you make this experience that you're more happy when you're, when you're living in the will of God? How is that for you? The hardest thing is to listen to what he wants us to do yeah. and not listen to what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, yeah. It's a struggle, no? It, it's always a struggle, but yeah. if we trust, we know that he'll do guide us on the right path, yeah. where we're quite easily um, going on the wrong tangent. Instead of following his path, we'll swap, go off on tangents 
and need to be brought back again to what he wants us to do. And we will be happy, joyful and pleased. No? And, and for people who are listening who have a problem maybe with their biological father, just ask God the Father, show the beauty that you love me and that, that there's a loving Father up there in heaven. He will give you, the, he will answer you. And then you can start to surrender to God the Father because you will ma then make the experience that he, of his goodness. No? No. Thank you so much. We haven't missed out one part. Yeah, tell me, Catherine. You, we can pray to the Father and Christ, mm -hmm. but there's three, three people of three persons yes. and the one true God and it's the Holy Spirit is the one that can give us the graces and the blessings to yes. do the others so we have to remember that there's three mm -hmm. and at different times we should use pray to different members of the one Trinity yes. absolutely true and you always stayed Catholic all your life, or you were at some point? I was baptized yeah. as a Catholic. Yeah. When I was teaching down in London, mm -hmm. um, I was teaching in a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And in my probationary year, we had meetings of all the probationers in our um, local education authority with the advisors that we all had mentors. Mm -hmm. And when I was there, there was three or four Quakers and they used to, everybody else was going off and in groups to the pubs and things and they would go to the coffee bar and talk and pray. And I thought that was nice. And then they wanted me to go to their churches and I went once and I wasn't comfortable with what they were doing. They were trying to find the Lord, their path but I, I, I had to stay with my church because that's what's in my heart. Uh, yeah, I, see. I, go, I go and pray with other, other people from different churches, but in my heart is my roots, my love of Our Lady, my mother, Christ, my big brother, and the Holy Spirit that can give me the grace that I need to persevere. Wow, what can I say? Thank you so much for this beautiful interview, Kevin.